Thank you, Mr. President. Namaste from India. Mr. President, India expresses its deep appreciation for the presentation of the Human Rights Council's report. We welcome OHCHR's close interaction with the member states and the stakeholders undertaken during the past year, as highlighted in the report, and its efforts to bring the conversation of human rights to the center stage. We also take note of the conclusions arrived at in the report. India's approach to human rights is rooted in a millennia-old tradition of upholding diversity and plurality of views. India has always looked at human rights as something that is indivisible and fundamental. Our commitment to human rights stems from our freedom struggle led by Mahatma Gandhi, which emphasized nonviolence and equality. This legacy is embodied in our constitution, which enshrines fundamental rights and establishes the principles of justice, liberty, equality, and fraternity. India's domestic framework for human rights protection continues to evolve and strengthen. Our judiciary has been at the forefront of expanding human rights protection with landmark judgments. The National Human Rights Commission, along with the state-level commissions, provides robust institutional framework for rights protection. Our commitment is reflected in progressive legislation and comprehensive programs for social upliftment and ensuring fundamental rights. As we conclude our two consecutive terms in the Council in 2024, we remain steadfast in our commitment to the protection and promotion of human rights guided by the principles enshrined in the UNGA Resolution 60-251 and the Institutional Building Package. We are thankful for all the support extended by the other Council members and the observers, as well as the OHCHR during our term as the Council member. We have witnessed the Council meeting for an unprecedented 15 weeks in 2024, the longest in its history. While this demonstrates the growing importance of human rights discourse, it also highlights certain challenges that need urgent attention. The multiplication of mandates and resolutions has led to fragmentation of human rights discourse, sometimes dividing rather than uniting member states. We believe there is an urgent need to rationalize and implement efficiency measures to ensure that the Council's work remain focused and effective. Mr. President, as we look ahead, we emphasize several key points for the Council's consideration. First, the Council's work must continue to be guided by non-selectivity, impartiality, and objectivity. The practice of prioritizing divisive mandates over consensus-based ones does not serve the institution's purpose of speaking with one voice. Second, we urge the members of the Council to continue to prioritize the work on thematic issues that affect developing world and the issues where mandate has been adopted with consensus. Third, discussions on technical issues which should ideally be taken up in other specialized organizations should be avoided so that the core mandate of the Council is not diluted. Fourth, there is an urgent need to evolve a system that is self-regulating and not outweighed by its own burgeoning mandates. There is also a need to forego selectivity in identifying mandate holders, forego biases, and to coalesce the fragmented human rights discourse once again. Fifth, consultation and consent of the concerned state should continue to be an important parameter in technical assistance and capacity building being provided by the Human Rights Council. Any human rights initiative needs the constructive engagement of the state concerned for its fruitful implementation. 
This not only leads to an implementation of human rights as desired, but also increases trusts on international multilateral institutions and multilateralism among the people. As we approach the Council's status review in 2026, we need to consider radical changes in its working methods to ensure efficiency and constructive engagement. India looks forward to continuing its engagement with the Council as an observer in 2025, and we seek positive consideration for our candidacy to the Council for the period 2026 to 2028. We remain committed to working with the High Commissioner of Human Rights and his office in a constructive and trust-based manner. Mr. President, in this age of multiple conflicts, the value of human rights needs to be emphasized. This can only be achieved if the Council speaks with one voice, focusing on issues that affect us all and prioritizing consensus-based mandates. Allow me once again to extend my delegation's support and cooperation in the work of the Human Rights Council. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of India. Jadi apanonku amma video ti bhalla gila, tebe amma channel ko like, share, or subscribe karipaku jama bhi bolon tu nahi.